This is Kentucky, the bluegrass state. More than 40,000 square miles of rolling, fertile land. It lies in the great central valley of the United States, east of the Mississippi River and south of the Ohio. The population is mainly rural. Farmers, dairymen, cattlemen, or horse ranchers. They're serious, hard-working people with their roots deep in the soil. As in rural communities everywhere, homes are widely scattered, but there's no feeling of isolation. A man's neighbors are his friends, each linked in the progress and welfare of the community. This crossroads village, less than 100 miles from the state capital, is called Southville. This is a country store, one of thousands of such stores in the United States. This is Ed Skelton and his daughter Mary, who own this store. Since the death of Mrs. Skelton several years ago, Mary has become her father's full-time partner running the home and helping in the store. The story of the Skeltons and their store is the story of most country stores in America. Such stores have helped to build the United States from wilderness, and they're a vital link in American rural life today. The growth of this store measures the growth of this village. Thirty years ago, when Skelton first started it, You'd have found a very meager stock on his shelves. The supply matched the demands of a farming community not yet aware of mass production and the fruits of the machine. Farmers relied entirely on their horses and on the unremitting toil of their hands. Farmers will always work hard, but now much of the heavy work is done with machines, and they can make bigger crops than they could by hand labor. Proportionately, the storekeeper's list grows bigger with every year. There are certain things that make a country store quite different from a city store. One is that the storekeeper knows his customers well. Another is that there's something of almost everything, but hardly ever enough. In Southville, you can buy woolens from New England or cottons from the mills of Tennessee. But you probably won't find the color you want for that Sunday dress. You can buy salmon from Alaska, but you may not find sardines from Portugal. He knows he can't go wrong on things like this. If he did, he couldn't keep his customers. A country store is run on a human basis. The keeper gets in what he thinks people need and as much as he thinks he can handle. No country store can survive long without a gasoline pump. Because nowadays no rural community can survive without the machine. The pump, like the store, is the center of news. It links Southville to the outside world, 10, 20, 100 miles away. And if the storekeeper dispenses friendliness with his gas, he can count on regular customers who will stop here rather than go on to another village. Nothing about the country store is pure business. It's the core of daily living, the heartbeat of the community. A slow beat geared to the land and free from the tensions that cities produce. But the fact that this is the only store in Southville doesn't mean that there's no competition. Now, with good roads and good automobiles, people could go to the city 20 miles away. To do their shopping in a big department store with a large and varied stock. Or they can do what millions of rural Americans do, order by mail from enormous concerns that can send anything.
from a prefabricated house to a lady's slipper. But still, it isn't the same as having grown up with the people who sell to you, having shared the same childhood, the same bad and good times. And as for the children, the country store is still a magic adventure, a treasure house full of all the things they dream of and yearn for. The goods that the storekeeper takes in from one customer, he passes on to others who have need for them. For barter is one of the mainstays of a country business. The widow Jones traded in this fine basket of eggs and country smoked ham for wool to knit a sweater. Fresh fruit and vegetables, the produce of the earth, is always welcome and can be exchanged for the product of the factory. The extension of credit is another keynote of country store management, for farmers only have cash in hand when their crops come in. By selling on credit, the country store provides a valued service. Small communities are as close in play as in business. Southville has no movie theater, so the storekeeper and his neighbors pool together to buy a motion picture projector. Once every month or so, they rent a program of moving pictures and hold a show on Saturday afternoon, charging just enough admission to defray the cost of the venture. Country pleasures are simple pleasures, here as everywhere, and appetites are not jaded by surfing. As a meeting place, the country store's main rival is the post office, and mail time is the great event of the day. The job of postmistress is by federal appointment, a well-paid and desirable position, and it's largely because of Mary's business training in the store that she qualified for it. Many of Southville's sons and daughters have left for broader horizons, and letters are the only links with home unless they forget to write. Through the parcel post service, the storekeeper can act as manufacturer's agent for many articles which he doesn't stock in the store. It also caters to a typical American craving for new gadgets, devices to make work easier and better in the home or on the farm, and to give Southville the feeling of being up to date. Sometimes it isn't the machines that need fuel, it's the passengers. 
A favorite stop of this school bus every afternoon is Skelton's Store, one of the rituals of the young in the country equivalent of the city soda fountain. Young and old agree on one particular form of pleasure, the hayride picnic. The traditional hayride is on top of a full wagon of hay, but this time they content themselves with spreading a layer of straw on the flat rack of the hay wagon and piling on for a fairly jolting ride to the picnic ground. People of Southville are proud of the beauty of their countryside. They don't say much about it because that's not their way. But in times like this, it casts a spell on all of them, a spell not unlike music. When day is done, they ride gaily home along the lanes, singing the songs that their people have sung for generations. Hang your head over, hear the wind blow. Will you be mine, dear? Will you be mine? Answer my question, will you be mine? Often in the evenings, a group of cronies gather in the store to discuss community problems and exchange ideas. These people are well informed by radio and press. They're quick and alert to take an interest in national and world affairs. Here a man may listen if he will, or freely speak his mind on any subject. His opinions may not be agreed with, but his right to them is not questioned. Here, as everywhere in America, people like to hear all sides of a question and make their own decisions. But commerce and arguments cease in Southville on Sunday, the Lord's Day, a day of rest. The cares of the workaday life are laid aside, and the tolling bell summons the faithful to their church. Small communities like Southville are often built up by groups of the same religious teaching. They worship gladly and try to live together according to the tenets of their faith. The only Sunday task for the storekeeper is to distribute the Sunday papers, a great moment in any community, for the Sunday papers are fat with news and fun. But news is really the least of the Sunday papers, unless it's news of clothes for women. And wonderful new dishes to try out. And for the children, nothing counts but the comics. Stories and pictures that they find endlessly fascinating. 
Through with their duties for the week, the storekeeper and his daughter are now free to spend the day quietly in their home, or perhaps to drive out to visit friends in another village, or they might go to the city and see a show or a baseball game. Whatever their choice, as they sit down to their meal, they give thanks to God for the blessings he's bestowed upon them, for they are humble and grateful people. Today, as always in a country store, the spirit of community life and friendship are as warm and unpretentious as storekeeper Skelton's round-bellied stove. Since America was first settled, the country store has played its part in advancing the development and culture of the nation. Such stores and such men still serve the people of America with hard work and simple dignity. Their spirit of cooperation and helpfulness is never better expressed than in their own words to a neighbor. What else can I do for you? This is Kentucky, the bluegrass state, more than 40,000 square miles of rolling, fertile land. It lies in the great central valley of the United States. A man's neighbors are his friends, each linked in the progress and welfare of the community. This crossroads village, less than a hundred miles from the state capital, is called Southville. This is a country store, one of thousands of such stores in the United States. This is Ed Skelton. and his daughter Mary, who own this store. Since the death of Mrs. Skelton several years ago, Mary has become her father's full-time partner, running the home and helping in the store. The story of the Skeltons and their store is the story of most country stores in America, east of the Mississippi River and south of the Ohio. The population is mainly rural. Farmers, dairymen, cattlemen, or horse ranchers. They're serious, hard-working people with their roots deep in the soil. As in rural communities everywhere, homes are widely scattered, but there's no feeling of...